Rev up your engine! Now people are always asking me, Scotty, what's a good cheap work truck we can get that won't break the bank, but it'll run okay? And I'm gonna answer the question, was it a dirt cheap pile of junk? Or was it an okay deal for a dirt cheap truck? Well, as you can see as we walk around, it still looks pretty good. The paint's in excellent shape. Doesn't look bad at all. Little ice on the hood because it's cold this morning. Front end still looks excellent. And as we crawl under, we'll take a look. Frame is solid. No rust. Nice, solid truck. Now, what's the story behind these Chevy Colorados? Well, originally, they were extremely underpowered. The original four-cylinder engine, which this thing has, was a 2.5. 8 liter 4 cylinder, they put out 175 horsepower. You can always tell by looking up here, got the 2.8 liter. But you could have gotten their 5 cylinder inline engine, which had 220 horsepower. And you might think, 5 cylinder inline engine, aren't they on balance? They found that they were an interesting in between. They had a lot more horsepower than the 4, but they got better gas mileage than the six. I had a customer in Houston had 300,000 miles on one of those straight five. He used it to deliver oil field equipment. So they could be very reliable engines. Now, even though this is only the four cylinder engine, it does have a standard transmission. And it is a very good standard transmission. It's a five speed. And this particular one is an ASIN, the Toyota company. Very good transmission. Realize they made these trucks all over the place. This particular one was made Made in Shreveport, Louisiana, but they make them in Brazil, lots of places, and a lot of them had these ASIN standard transmissions, which are excellent transmissions. Now it's 20 something degrees outside. Let's see how this thing starts up. Starts right up. I do have to say, it's a typical GM product. It's got some ABS brake problems on it. It does have bad sensors. It also has a module problem. So the customer's just living without it. No big deal. They really didn't work all that well in the first place anyway. Basically an economy pickup truck. Seats are comfortable enough. And as we go out, listen to the engine. Baby is still humming along nicely. Even though, as we can see, 194,027 miles on it. They were not bad trucks. And you can get them dirt cheap used, like my customer did here. The heater still works good. You can see the ice is starting to melt from the engine heat outside too. And it's old school. It's got a hand crank window. Something that is not going to break. Now you do see a little smoke, but it's not burning oil. It's just cold out today and the sun's starting to make it feel a little bit better, at least on my face. And as I said, a nice smooth running engine. Now when you consider that he paid 3,000 bucks for this truck three years ago, he's certainly getting his money's worth out of it. We'll take it for a little spin. We'll slip it in reverse. Backs up great, nice and smooth. Power steering works fine, handles quite well. The shocks aren't worn out, and it rides along quite nicely out here in the woods. Granted, it's not a race truck by any stretch of the imagination, but as we downshift, it will move. It's not that slow. It's actually a fun little truck. I'm pleasantly surprised. Now with this tiny four cylinder engine, you'd be pushing it if you tried to tow 2,000 pounds. It's rated at more like 1,600 pounds. But if you would have got the bigger engine and the tow package, you could have towed 4,000 pounds. This isn't made for towing heavy stuff. As I said before, got a handy bed. No rust on it. The liner's still in good shape. It's more used for hauling stuff. It's not a big tower. You could tow four wheelers and stuff behind it, a small boat. This is more a nice small truck for doing all the odds and sides anybody would want to do. And since this one was purchased three years ago for three grand and it still runs this good, pretty good truck if you ask me. See, it's got some tears in them. You can put seat covers on them. But really, as you can see, the fit and finish is still in pretty good shape. Check out the alloy wheels they're still in good shape too the factory ones now they stopped making these things for a year because the sales were way down like 35,000 in one year and then they retooled and made them bigger the newer ones are bigger have more horsepower this old one is a nice little truck if you want a little truck but he's making everything bigger now some people want a little truck that does all the jobs that a normal person needs. It's not a big commercial truck. It doesn't have all that power. 
but on the other hand it gets better gas mileage than the big ones and it's still very handy and let's face it you don't get much in a vehicle especially a truck for three grand these days and that was three years ago so if you're looking for a cheap little truck don't poo poo these colorados especially if you can find the one that has that straight five cylinder engine that puts out a lot more horsepower and has a really long lifespan i like those inline fives they were decent engines but even this little four banger it's still running quite smooth doesn't really burn oil not a bad deal for a three thousand dollar truck that still runs this good because good luck trying to find a toyota tacoma that runs this good for three thousand dollars three years ago that's not gonna happen realize there's still plenty of these out there for sale use take advantage of a great price on a truck they could still have have a lot of life left in it for doing medium duty jobs you don't really need a giant truck especially if you're the type of person that you want a knock around truck to do stuff on weekends if we're picking up stuff and you don't drive it that much you could be driving this thing for another 10 20 years if you don't put much mileage on it and here's some bonus questions and answers mr confused 2 says should i buy my lease car i have a 2018 dodge durango rt fully loaded with 26.5 no major problems i baby it and should i buy it or should i give up and get another lease all right well one i would never lease a car because you just you never own the car and you're throwing money away on the other hand you lease the dodge durango rt dodges tend to fall apart as their age I would never buy that car if I were you anyways so at least you got the Dodge out of your system that you drove it for years you don't have to pay for the repairs because you were just leasing it right I would buy a different vehicle myself I would not buy a Dodge vehicle if you don't mind the price of the money you're spending on leasing it though go right ahead maybe you're running a business I don't know then it's a tax write-off that's the only time I advise people to do it because leasing a car you pay forever you buy a good car like a Toyota Honda and you drive it for 10 15 20 more years you get your money's worth out of it right after you pay for it you don't have any payments so you're saving a ton of money if you lease a car you always have payments you're going to spend a fortune i had a customer who leased cars for 30 years and i showed them i said you know you spent over a hundred thousand dollars more on your cars than i did over those 30 years because i buy mine used <laughs> <laughs> not a smart idea to lease unless it's a business thing but at least you did it with a dodge you know if you would have leased a toyota i said well that's crazy just buy the stupid thing but leasing it get out of your system if you have to have a jaguar lease it get it out of your system don't buy one camline 292 says scotty my 2015 corolla seemed to have a lot of vibrations i took it to a mechanic and they said the tires looked a little scalloped so i took it to a tire store and they said they were very scalloped they told me to run my fingers and i could see some scalloping but i thought it was normal because it would wear that way because the wheels travel in one direction anyway i bought a full set of prellies and had an alignment done but notice very little difference scalloping means that there is a problem in your front end there's something wrong either the alignment is way off the struts are worn the ball joints tie rods are worn they scallop because they're not rolling down the road correctly normally they do not wear that way you say the old tires had plenty of tread in your little writing here when you get down to almost no tread they might scallop a little because you're down to nothing but if it had a lot of tread and they were scalped there was a problem and you say that after you had this you didn't notice the difference it still got some vibration one start with a better shop start with a real front end shop that's all they do i used to use cotton brothers in houston but i'm not there anymore and anyways they stopped doing cars and only did trucks so even if you're in houston they won't do your cars anymore so <laughs> things change yeah find a good alignment shop and show them everything that had been done and say look it's still got the shake maybe they'll find a tie rod or a ball joint zone or maybe and i see this all the time they didn't align it right in the first place i have had so many people go to shops that said they paid for an alignment i sent them to cotton brothers when they did do it and they'd say look the guys just did a lousy job aligning it or they did a lousy job balancing the tires i see that all the time a lot of these stores they don't know what they're doing anymore they get young kids give them a tire machine here put it on and they don't know how to operate it and they're in a big hurry and they don't do the job correctly so start with a front end alignment shop and see what they say because that scalloped wear means something was wrong and obviously the other guys didn't fix it so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell